Kevin, how often do you use LCR panning with three rhythm guitar tracks? I don't do three rhythm guitar tracks. I've been dabbling with this in my more recent productions, which has resulted in a much fuller sound overall. Oh, interesting. However, I do not use the third rhythm track in the entire song. Smart. That's what I would do as well, which results in abrupt and noticeable change when it goes back to only left and right pan rhythms. Yeah, that's why I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. I know people ask me that, about that a lot. I, I'm a less is more kind of guy. I'd rather just get two powerful rhythm guitars and then throw up a lead up the center when, when necessary. Because rhythms in the middle never sound right to me. That's just me. It really depends on the band. Um, but for most productions, it just doesn't work for me personally. Because I have the same problems like that you just mentioned. I do not use the third rhythm track in the entire song, which results in an abrupt and noticeable change when it goes back to only the left and right panned guitars. I have used volume automation to make the transition more balanced, but now I am contemplating if I should just do LCR for the entire track or song. Is this something you do often or have any recommendations? Dude, I never, ever, ever record a rhythm guitar up the center. Never. It just doesn't sound right to me because you have all this fatness on the, first of all, you have the fatness of the bass up the middle, right? You have the kick and snare up the middle. That's a lot. That's a lot right there. Then you have the thickness of the guitars on the sides. Then you have to put leads somewhere. I know there are people that do it. Maybe I'll do something like, you know, a vocal drops out. And there's a cool like jangly kind of riff that's sort of a riff. I'll pan that up the middle, um, but no like chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it in the middle. I've never really done that. Uh, I've tried with hardcore bands back in the day, like on a breakdown without a guitar up the middle, and I, it just doesn't. I keep it so low in the mix that I would rather just add a third and fourth layer and hard pan just for the breakdown than have a weird third guitar up the center. That's just me. So um, that's my honest opinion, man. Again, give it a shot. If you like it, stick with it. I know there are some guys that do use a third guitar up the middle and love it. I'm just not one of those guys. I'd rather leave that sonic real estate available for the bass uh, and then also leads and things like that. Hopefully that helps, Evan. Yeah, again, if you like the sound of it, dude, keep doing it. You know, that's just my own opinion. So hopefully that clears things up for you. Now, if you're looking to improve the sound of your mixes, it's critical to have a firm grasp on solid EQ and compression techniques. And this is why I'm offering you direct access right now for absolutely free to my crisp and clear heavy mix formula. The heavy mix formula is comprised of three main components, an EQ and compression cheat sheet that contains all of my starting points when it's time to mix a heavy production. Within the cheat sheet, there are clickable links to private mixing tutorials for all of the main instruments within a heavy production. And finally, there's a clickable link below each of the individual tutorials so you could download the exact same multi-tracks that I'm using so you can mix along with me. Again, the crisp and clear heavy mix formula is absolutely free and there's a link below that you can click and you can have direct access right now. And until next time, happy mixing.